As a part of the charismatic Episcopal Church, I think we, we felt, and I, I'll just have to personalize it, that I felt that we, were, we had something new where the evangelical, the charismatic, and the liturgical sacramental were flowing together into one mighty river of God. And so to me, this was where I was gonna spend the rest of my life, <clears throat> continuing to make that possible. As <clears throat> my journey continued and as I read Catholic theology, as I looked at the church fathers, read what they uh, had written, as I looked at the history of the church, <clears throat> it became clear to me that what I was doing was already present within the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is evangelical. The Catholic Church is charismatic. The Catholic Church is, of course, liturgical, sacramental. And that at some point in history, some of these tributaries had gone off from the church. But the church had always maintained as the river of God, uh, all three of these, that in some different apostolates have different emphases. There are certain apostolates that may emphasize the charismatic or emphasize the evangelical or emphasize the liturgical sacramental or maybe social teachings and other things. But we continue to flow together and all of those things are evident and a part of who I was as Catholic. So when I came into the church, I never felt like I was leaving anything behind. I was bringing all of it with me that I might express it even more fully in, in the fullness of the faith that I experienced as a Catholic. In the charismatic Episcopal Church, I think in many ways I was feeling like we were building the church as it was really supposed to be, that <clears throat> what we were doing was something new, something that had not been perhaps done before. And it was a bridge that many used to come into a more fuller, a, a more, a, a fuller understanding of what the church can be. And at the same time, there were certain pieces missing and also a, a sense of uneasiness that I didn't have a magisterium to fall back on. I remember one house of bishops where we were discussing something having to do with one of the doctrines of our church. And I sat there all of a sudden having this mild panic attack going, we're making decisions about doctrines and teaching that people are going to depend upon for their very salvation. And all of a sudden I became very aware of how inadequate I would be on my own to make a decision like that. That I would propagate something that people would depend upon for their salvation. So I think what I really saw within the Catholic faith, of course, uh, it opened the window to, to more uh, in terms of devotional uh, expression. Uh, there was a, a greater fullness of, of everything uh, that we believed, but there was also, there was a magisterium, a teaching office of the church that, that I could stand upon because it had been a part of the church for thousands of years rather than something that I was putting together to help some people get, get to heaven. So that was a big part. And I think also being in communion with the Holy Father as a CEC priest, then bishop and then archbishop, my apostolic succession was always talked about with respect to coming back to Peter. And in a sense, and again, this is, this is my own personal experience with this, I felt like by what authority am I a bishop now if <clears throat> my episcopate is based on apostolic succession that goes back to Peter? Why am I not in communion with the Peter of today? And so in my returning to my Catholic faith, or uh, coming to the Catholic faith, I felt I was returning something that was really a trust to uh, the Holy Father. I was giving back something that I had borrowed and I gave back my, my uh, episcopate.